billion liters a year of IPA in the state. Um, it's quite a number to get your head around. Three thousand million liters. Lots. That's the same as SAB's annual production. Total SAB is just IPA in the state. Just in IPA. Yeah, just in IPA. Four. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, that's no, sorry, that's cross. Ninety-three million. So, so yeah, ninety-three million liters is RPA. But it took a hell of a long time to get there. I mean, this starts in two thousand and five. Yeah. Um, you know, this was production barrels, and and it was a long, 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 long journey until it suddenly started like really taking off in 2013, 14. Uh, you know, so so I think. I think we, we, we started very late here with the IPA thing. Hold it to your mouth, Bruce. Ah, sorry. Okay, so, um, yeah, there were, and, and to give some perspective, though, it did really create the, the craft industry in the States. In, in 1980, there were 92 breweries in the US, uh, in total, and um, IPA kind of started really taking off somewhere around here when there were, yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, a couple of hundred, and if you look at this trajectory here, um, yeah, there are 8,300 breweries in the States now. Um, so, so yeah, and, and a lot of that growth is attributed to IPA. Okay, next. So, um, IPA in South Africa, as I said, you couldn't buy it at all five or six years ago. Um, <laughs> So, Did you make these memes yourself? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one. So basically, Devil's Peak launched a chair. Um, and it debuted at the Town Fest for a period in September 2011. Um, commercially available pretty much in 2012. And it kind of was the beer that put Devil's Peak and to some extent craft beer on the map, uh, even in South Africa. And remember when they used to actually make beer there? Like, <laughs> Golden Ale, Woodhead, which was on Amber Ale, and Silver Tree Sasson, which was one of the best. They don't make those two anymore, and the previous one, the IPA is a, you know, not very, you know, they don't make IPA anymore. Um, yeah, you know, but it was a classic West Coast IPA. We couldn't get it in Joburg until League of Beers launched, and then a lot of us spent a lot of money shipping IPA to Joburg. Um, and then they were bought out. And then that was brought up by Yapish. Well, League of Beers was brought up by Yapish. Signal Hill. Signal Hill. And Devil's Peak was brought up by Signal Hill. KFC. Signal Hill and KFC. Well, Yapish. I just want to say the blockhouse says over the years it's always been a very good starter IBA for the Black Hills. Yeah. 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 And then become IPA drinkers. Yeah. 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 Two to two flag for Joburg. All the rest were just about Cape Town. Well, Brendan went and started brewing Farmer Citra as one of his first beers at Frontier. Um, and then the Cape Boys, like Skeleton Coast from Jack Black. Um, inconsistent, but, but really good. This is the CBC Cape Good Hops Double IPA. I still think it's one of the best beers ever in South Africa. Sadly, not brewed anymore. Drifters, Scallywag, um, Woodstock's California Cater, Agus Giant. I mean, there's some, there's some really, really amazingly good quality in there. But they still feel good quality. Okay, let's go to the next slide. But the newest styles of IPA are definitely finding an appeal. So the juicy kind of nippers, which are a little sweeter, a little more approachable, but more sessionable. Um, and, and brute, you know, like there's, 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 there's some, some interesting, fun stuff happening there. So just, um, I see that just launched it. Root black out here. Uh, can't wait to get my hand on that. Yeah, so, so, so there, are some, there are some kind of, and, and a lot of session out here is being made. Um, it's arguable whether there's even such a thing as a session out here. Most people just call it an APA. But um, yeah, I think out here carries such kind of weight in the marketing thing that if you call it a session out here, it's going to sell more than an APA. Okay, let's go to the next one. 
Yo, a proper big up here. I'm a really fresh funny fan base. Um, and as much as you just grew it, too big. You know, like a big. My life lasts. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but the hazy, no, but the hazy stuff for ourselves and the lighter stuff for ourselves. But please watch. Thank you so much. More people brew these guys here. We've got the hops and and loads of other. Anyway, um, so just let's talk about styles. <laughs> So next one, girls. So, like, if you want to kind of try and draw a flavor map, and I rock this off here, so I didn't make it. You get that kind of fruity, juicy to dry kind of axis. And then this kind of hoppy bitter to sweet and malty kind of axis. You can kind of plot the different styles on it, but you know, and, and, and often well, it's confusing because often they can be in both. So so you get triple IPAs that can be kind of hoppy and bitter and dry, but they can also be quite fruity and juicy. Um, you know, like and, and yeah, so there's, there's there's a lot of confusion. Obviously, session IPAs are like the longer IPAs in the middle. Of, um, yeah, really yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there's a little bit out there. It's, it's gonna, I'm not going to teach you about the 100 IPA style. But there's No, I didn't. Um, there it is. So what's your favorite? Yes. Pardon? I like double IPA. The traditional West Coast big double IPA. Oh, the ball. Yeah, yeah, Frontiers so, uh, uh, Corner Corner, yeah. I mean, spectacular when he gets it right. Um, yeah, but I'll tap the camera across. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really good. It's a big bear. Yeah. I don't think it's quite as good as the Cape Cod Hops. That's it's, it's, it's yeah. that one's like Danker and. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't worry more than me, but it's not, it's not that you know. I mean, I want, I want big Dank bear, no, hardly any bird in this area. I want big Dank <laughs> So, <laughs> I'll just talk about some of my favorite styles actually. Black IPA, over lockdown, I think I think I did about six batches of Black IPA with Ragnarok. Um, uh, and about in my 40 litre batches, or 38 litre batches, I think they had 600 grams of expensive American hot sugar. Um, yeah, uh, but just so fucking amazing and weird, right? And a good sort of seven or eight percent, so you want the body there to carry all that off. Um, but is it black IPA? Okay, so like black India pale ale. I don't know if that makes sense. Is it American black ale? Because it's had all these names before. Is it Cascadian dark ale? Uh, maybe American style India black ale. You can't. How can you call it a, a, a pale ale when it's black? But anyway. Um, so black watch was the first one brewed by the one. Whoa. He's trying to tell me to hurry up. That wasn't me! But we were on Pub and Brewery in the early 90s. Um, and it's kind of got these... That was me! Espresso, dark chocolate flavors complemented by dry body. And then this big dang, tiny hoppiness to the best example of it. Um, that can be spectacular. It's going to be fun. That's actually just... And then... So, basically, Bruce, it's a fucking hop stuff. No, because it hasn't got as much roast as it starts. You want to keep black dark, your dark malt very, very, very subtle. Um, they really they can kind of a bit of a bit of dark expression, but it's definitely it's more like a, a porter or yeah, like a, a light porter um, malt base, and then uh, shit tons of hot. Okay, so so chef, brew type here is another really cool style that I'll, I'll go into lately. Um, please buy my beer and bring one next week. Okay. So, um, so champagne IPA is also called, but I can't call it that anymore because the champagne people sued them. Um, yeah. Jump the classic! So the champagne supernova, the one in the essay, they got a cease and desist order. Oh wow! Yeah. That's Sandy Stone. Sandy, yeah. It's not even brewed in the champagne region of France. Oh. <laughs> 
We can't use the word champagne. Anyway, we're trying to see the law and see the law next to the Okay, so it was first. Where's the church outside? Yeah, this style was first brewed at the social kitchen in San Francisco, almost as a reaction to Nipah. So, so they wanted to try and bring something back to the West Coast that was novel and new. Um, pale malts, a little bit of maize, um, and, and they just use one hop, mosaic. And, and I think that it, it's, it's an amazing hop if you get a single hop. It's kind of been a... Uh, Smash! It had an enzyme, an enzyme added to improve fermentability, so amyloid glucase it is. Um, which basically cuts up all those remnant sugars that, 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 that uh, the mal malting or mashing process can't do. Um, and you want to target um, a final gravity of one. So you want to make it as dry as fuck. Mm. Um, very thin body. Um, they're usually between 5.5 and 7% alcohol. Usually only 20 RBUs because there's no body to carry the hops. So you want to be very careful. But they've got shit tons of dry and water hops. Um, and you know, it's a very low body, dry to the point of being almost whiny, like, like champagne whiny. Like you. And then effervescent, very high carbonation, intense hop aromas, and they're super refreshing summer beer. So, yeah, so Gavin and OC and I are going to try and knock one out next week. Oh, 
Yeah, you don't try to say me like that. Okay. Yeah, chef. Yeah, chef. Because yeah, I have chef some bris. I've got Delphi and yeah. Jackie fighting over who's gonna fly our first, our first like harvest now. Yeah. And just to put it in something. You know. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Bruce. Okay. So the, uh, I just want to go. The other day, I had my first sour idea. It just gave me like instant hard work. So that's good for the city, right? So if you think there's a place that you can do a nice sour IPA, yeah. you just have to do it. So I've got a pure bread IPA, like um, which I had at last year's Summer Bird Fest, and I was actually asked by the American Embassy based on that beer to brew them a batch for their beer fest. Um, and so you can do so, and, and I used your bread, and I, and I didn't have any other yeast. It was just pure. But it's also soft with the malt, right? Uh, it, it took like two or three weeks, but uh, I wasn't in a hurry. Um, you've just got to realize where to add your drops. And, and obviously also partner it with the right help. But a lot of IPAs, the bitterness causes the heartburn because they're so acidic anyway. Or, or they, you know, the hot bitterness. I, I, can't, I, I hate to admit it, but like, I can't drink too many IPAs by not getting like crap in my life. <laughs> 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 No, so there, there's some amazing new hops. What do you do? What, if you could take a citrate? I want, I want fucking bank. So, so I actually like some of the older schools. Like, like, no, so, so like Chinook. Uh, for me, is like the dankest of the uh, old school American hops. Um, and, and it's got this real marijuana-y kind of dank, you know. Uh, it, it, it's just absolutely incredible. And I think it's totally amazing. Uh, but yeah, so, so for me, for me it's that, that, that Chinook, um, to some extent Simcoe, um, those, those kind of big, dank, dark hops are on my head. Yeah, yeah. So I've brewed with them together, not bred them together. Yeah, yeah. Look, there's so many new hop releases, but they all turn me towards the Nipa okay. So, so they, they, they're all fruit bombs, they're all tropical fruit. Yeah, but they're something that I've made. Sabro. I mean, Donnie brewed that, that just pre-lockdown program at, at uh, Gavin, the Hunger series with Sabre, I think, from memory. And it's just a moment. Chicken and hops. Um, so, so, I mean, they, but, but as I say, all of the new research and seems to be going to a fruity, uh, you know, citrus is almost over already. They all got tropical fruits and, and that area, which I'm not that far about. To be honest, I, I like the, the old school part of the ship. But I'm not from the place. I'll tell you something. 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 I'll tell you something